Welcome one and all to a video series. Now, I believe I'm uploading this video on Monday. I don't think it's going to be Sunday. It should be Monday. And this is going to be a video series that might last about eight or nine episodes. I don't know yet. I don't even know if I can even do that many. I don't normally do that many all in succession. It, it, it does tend to stress me out. But I want to try to do this during the week of Christmas going into New Year's. And what is it going to be about? This is going to be about Impact Wrestling. How to improve Impact, which will be on this video. The next videos after that will be about storylines. And I'm doing storylines on the Impact Champion, the TNA Champion, the X Division Champion, the Knockouts Champion, the Tag Champions, the guys, the Tag Champions, the girls, and if I can, three separate storylines for people who are not in the main title scene, but they deserve to get stories. At least about three. I believe I can do three, maybe four. I'm not exactly sure. I'm still working it out right now. Literally, I have notes in front of me for the for this video and the next two videos. I don't know about the rest. So if this is interesting you, I, I don't normally do this, but give a like to the video. So one, I'll know that you really are interested in this. And two, maybe a couple of people will see it and say, hey, this is interesting. Something new to watch. Let's, let's hope so. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Sorry, guys. It's cold in my apartment. Even though there's heat, there isn't much heat. It's like in the 60s right now, like 66, 68 degrees. And I know people will say, hey, why don't you call up the, gu the, the city? It, believe me, people in my building probably already have. There isn't that much heat. The heat comes up and it goes away. And they would say, well, there's heat been coming up. Even if it's in the 60s, it's required. It's freaking cold still. That sucks. <laughs> anyway, this is about improving Impact Wrestling production-wise. This is not about storyline. This, this is basically about bringing up the show itself. Not about how to write for the wrestlers of the show. Now... First and foremost, the first thing that needs to be done for Impact is to have interaction with someone at ringside. The major problem they have right now, like many promotions right now, other than WWE, who is using the Titantron technique of using a whole bunch of webcams and a whole bunch of people either recorded or actual live, doesn't matter which one, they have some type of interaction. Yes, of course, let's be honest. Those people that are on screen at the new place they moved to, most of them are probably pre-recorded beforehand. And that's where they get all the canned can heat and canned pop from. Let's be honest. They're using old canned heat and pop. AEW, at least they supplement with some fans and wrestlers which gives it a much greater feel and this is something impact going into 2021 should do first thing they need to finally come to terms of how to do the show they cannot just keep doing it the way it is where you have just the production crew the ref and the wrestler wrestlers Counting if there's any um, video packages or any type of segments because they will come out by themselves and talk and talk into the camera and this is not working for them. They need more. So they need to bring in the wrestlers, they need to bring in independent wrestlers, or they need to bring in some amount of fans. Even if it's 20 fans or 20 wrestlers, they need to have them at ringside. Now, they can do just like what... Uh, well, not WWE because they haven't been doing it very well. AEW, making sure they scan everybody, making sure they get tested, and making sure no one is in direct contact. They can do it. If AEW has been able to get away with it and do it, and very few people have been getting sick, they can do it. Unlike WWE, who's had dozens of people sick because they didn't want to do it correctly, AEW is doing it correctly. So Impact now interacting with AEW should take really good, great data from them, great information from them, and apply it to the show. That's number one. Number two, and this is something I've stated for quite a while, new commentators. We need new commentators. 
I know they're using Josh Matthews and Madison Rain mainly due to the fact they're a couple, they're married, and they're together and they can just record together and that would be the end of it and that's good. That's the way they see it. But at this point, after so long of them being together, they need to change it up. I'm not against Josh Matthews. I'm not against Madison Rain. In fact, I will be doing something with them in the story part of the other videos. Either separately or together, I will be doing something. I haven't figured it out yet, but I will. <laughs> if I can actually do all these videos. But they need to be replaced. Even if it's temporarily, they need a change out. Now, these are the people I would like to hear. Because they're not going to show them much. Now, you can use the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. I truly believe that he should be used. The guy, I don't believe he's commentating right now, he's been working with NWA, so they can at least lend him out for commentary work, because I don't think NWA is doing much with him, even though the, what is it, the U, um, UWN, I think that's the United Wrestling Network, they do their videos on there, but I don't think they use him all the time, so he should be a free agent, at least enough to do commentary for Impact Wrestling, you can have, um, you can do something with Billy Corgan. That's what I believe. Second person that might be able to do something is Matt Stryker. And I know not everyone likes Matt. But he does have a distinct voice. He's very good color commentator. And he will get the work done very, very well. I do believe putting the Pope with the De De The thing I'm botching is because of the next person I want to mention. The Pope D'Angelo De Niro with Matt Stryker would work well. And if you can't have the Pope with Matt Stryker, have him with Don Callis. Have Matt Stryker with Don Callis. Have him do work with either one of them. There's nothing wrong with it. You can even have him do color commentary with all three of them if it's necessary. Or at least change it up. Have just either Matt Stryker do it by himself. Or the Pope do it by himself. Or even Don. Having Don, when the storyline with him and Kenny Omega is done. Have him do it with Don. You could do something. You need to change up the commentary team. And the person I truly believe that will be one of the best people there, if you can get him, because it's going to be a big question if you can, should be Maronaro. Right now, he's not working with WWE. He's done. He has been signed with AEW, at least as far as we know, because he could be. So the best person that could do this, that might be willing to do it, if he's willing, could be Mauro Naro. Have him do it. He needs to be there. Why not have Mauro Naro come on Impact Wrestling? Even if it's a one-off on it, I'm not saying Impact Plus. I don't want to see him on Impact Plus show. But you could actually promote that. You could do Mauro and Nero on an Impact Plus or on a Hard to Kill pay-per-view, a Slammiversary pay-per-view, or a Bound for Glory. Just a one-off for him to come in and commentate to see how it would feel for him and how the fit would be with Impact Wrestling as well as the, the um, creative team. Next, what needs to be done for Twitch? Because we also have to cover Twitch because a lot of people will, if they can't get the app, look. I'm on a fixed budget. I'm disabled. I'm on a fixed budget. And it's easy to say, well, you can spend $5 a month. Well, $5 a month could be transportation for a guy like me who doesn't have a job right now, who can't work and only gets a certain amount from the government. So Twitch, and compared to that, there are some people who just can't get the app in different countries in the world. So that is an alternative. But one of the problems you have with Twitch is Melissa Santos. Now, mind you, a lot of people like Melissa. A lot of people love Melissa. I myself, I was critical of her when she first started because she was very sloppy and unprofessional. She either made big mistakes when she was working. She still does it periodically because she does have a daughter. I'm not against her having a child and still doing the work at home. There's nothing wrong with a stay-at-home mom working and taking care of a child. There's nothing wrong with that. But knowing that most of the time she forgets to turn on her mic. To make sure that 
she has the camera zoomed in on her. Not talking about the quality of the video, that always depends on Twitch. But if she's not making sure she's talking at the camera, she's not making sure her mic is unmuted, or that it is muted, that has always been a major issue. Eating on screen, and then what she did the last time, which really pissed me off, that she spilled water over her laptop. And instead of waiting when you go on break and eat, you eat while you're on stream. I know streamers do it. I know a lot of streamers do it. And I don't agree with it myself. Now, if I became a streamer, I'd probably do it myself. I just don't agree you should be eating on stream for the simple reason something could go wrong. You can spill it onto your keyboard. You can spill it on your mouse. You can just mess up your computer like Melissa did. So for me personally, I just don't agree with it. But I understand if she didn't have the time and I'm not 100% against her. I just don't agree with it. Here's the thing. Melissa normally gets numbers before what happened with Kenny Omega between 1,500, maybe 1,800, very rarely 2,000. What she needs to do, or what they should do in Impact, is to change it up once a month. Once. She can still do it three times out of the month. But once a month, you should have a surprise guest. And these are the people I think will be good. You could have Rosemary come on the show. She could run it. A lot of people like Rosemary, so she should be there. Taya Valkyrie should come on. And hell, if her husband is, well, you know, he's home and, you know, um, he accidentally gets on stream, that would be kind of a good thing. I just don't want him in trouble because you know how Vince is and he doesn't want anyone to be seen on another company. So I don't want him to get in any trouble. AEW's fine. They don't mind um, Brian Cage with Melissa because, yeah, they're intermingling, but it doesn't matter to them. But Taya Valkyrie is another one. You could have Sammy Callahan come on. The, 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 the draw himself could come on. That would be something new and good. Hell, you got Rich Swan come on with a Sue Young. Look, Rick and Sue Young are married. So you could have the Susie show up with the Rick Swan acting in character, messing with him, saying, girl, would you stop? That could be something interesting. And then finally, the last thing I think that needs to be done in 2021, if they're not going to do it, because I do believe they may do it, and they should do this, is for Impact Wrestling to interact with AEW by sending some of their people over. Now, this is what's been talked about in the community many, many times. And I agree that they should start really bringing in Impact Wrestling wrestlers over there. You could bring the X Division. Manic is now X Division champ. Bring him in. Let him go up against Joey Janela. Let him go up against Sonny Kiss. Let him get pissed off to the point where he supposedly... Well, no. That's going into the next story. Sorry. You'll see that. I just made a mistake. I just brought that in. But those are just examples of what should be done. Bring people in. Bring in a moose. Bring in a Manic. Bring in Rick Swan if he keeps the title because we don't know what's going on with Kenny. Bring these people into AEW briefly. Set up shows that overlap impact with AEW. Make it two shows. They need it. They need this. I believe if you do these steps, this could easily improve the show immensely. Get fans of wrestlers at ringside. New commentary team. They need it badly. If you can get Mauro Renaro, get Mauro. The question is, can you? Have on Twitch once a month. Have someone from the Impact roster appear there. Like a Rosemary. Like a Taya Valkyrie. Like a Sammy Callahan. Like a Moose. Whoever you want who's charismatic enough to carry the show that day. Then finally, more interaction with AEW. Sending your wrestling talent over there. I don't care if it's Impact Grand Championship. I'm not saying you should. But you get my point. Bring people over there with the titles. Or not. The most charismatic people. Something that can spark interest in saying, Whoa, this guy is here. And he normally is on Impact Wrestling. Let's see him there. This is what I believe will improve the show. Counting if they've not already decided to do this themselves. But this is just my point of view. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace!